And what was also particularly nice for that session was that we were hearing from some African entrepreneurs and what they're doing. And that's where we're going for our next and final session as well. We're going to welcome back one of our young entrepreneurs that we heard from at the beginning of the session. That is Chibona, Ogb Chibona Ogbona who is speaking in the first session as one of the European Development Day's uh, young leaders. He has been working on a project called Lighting Up Nigeria, the Lighting Up Nigeria initiative, and it's with uh, great pleasure that we're going to invite him back and ask him to tell us a little bit more about it. So we're going to hear from him very soon. Or we are going straight to him, perhaps. So I can see him on the screen. OK, so I see him on the screen. So he's here already. Hello, Chimuna. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, so just in, case, just in case people weren't here for the session earlier this morning, can you just uh, introduce yourself again and tell us uh, what your role is in this project? OK, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Chibuna Obona. I'm the Ed Young Leader from Nigeria. I'm also the co-founder of Curie Energy Limited. And uh, I currently lead um, the research for the Global Heat Energy Outlook in Sub-Saharan Africa as the regional coordinator. Um, that's just a few of the things I do. I'm also uh, the project lead for the Lighting Up Nigeria Initiative, a pro social impact project of our company that seeks to power 10,000 local healthcare clinics using solar energy by 2030 in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Okay, brilliant. Thank you, Chibuna. So, uh, let's get started. Uh, what, what made you come up with this idea for the Lighting Up Nigeria initiative? Okay, well, when I came back from the International Renewable Energy uh, Agency Youth Forum in Abu Dhabi um, earlier in January 2020, uh, we never knew that we, had, we were going to experience COVID-19, but it just happened that when COVID-19 struck the world, everybody was on lockdown. And um, school stopped, um, businesses almost collapsed, and um, also healthcare facilities across um, Nigeria and across all other parts of Africa. We are in, you know, the kind of a crisis and emergency. And uh, many of these healthcare facilities did not have the requisite, um, the requisite facilities or the uh, the equipment to cater for those who had COVID-19 or those who had um, other health implications. So while we were brainstorming on how we could be part of the solution, we came up with the idea to power um, local health care clinics in our communities here in Nigeria using solar energy. So that is how we came up with the Lighting Up Nigeria Initiative as a way to respond to COVID-19 and also to help build more resilient um, health care facilities across Nigeria. Okay, and, and you mentioned earlier in your introduction there that your goal is to bring solar power to 10,000 clinics in Nigeria. I mean, that seems like a hugely uh, ambitious goal. How's it going? Ambitious. Yes, um, it's going very well. Uh, we have started off with the first pilot project in Umuahia, Nigeria. Um, we started since October, as I told you earlier. So what we discovered was apart from installing solar power, some of the healthcare facilities need renovation. Some, so many parts of the healthcare facility was dilapidating. Um, some of them have, um, are underfunded. So we have to you know, come in to renovate parts of the healthcare facility and also then to install the solar um, power next. So that is where we are now. We are, this, we are completing the, the renovations for the pilot project and soon we will now install the solar, um, the solar power there. So the, the 10,000 goal is very, very ambitious because we feel that giving ourselves a challenging goal will help us to you know, dream bigger and also uh, make higher, more impact you know, in, in terms of um, sustainable energy for healthcare. And looking at Nigeria's population, over 200 million people, so 10,000 10, healthcare clinics is really a small goal. You know? And I believe that by 2030, through um, international cooperation partnerships, we'll be able to achieve this goal. Thank you. Okay, so I mean, you said there. I mean, obviously, it's a it's a challenging goal. I mean, what kind of challenges? What kind of specific challenges are you facing, and and how are you able to overcome those challenges? Okay, the first um, challenge is um, 
you know, being able to understand the right models that will suit each community because every community is special in their own way. So we have to uh, develop new models or new business models or new strategies on how to uh, implement this project for each community. Some, some communities want to participate by contributing a percentage um, of the money. Some communities don't want to participate at all. They just want uh, the organization or the company uh, to just bring this solution to them without their participation. So uh, different communities with different uh, preferences. So that is just one challenge. Another challenge is the fact that we have a very low investment prioritized for local healthcare facilities. And you know that for primary healthcare, it's very essential to achieving you know, universal healthcare. So if we are not able to um, have investments that flow to primary healthcare, then it will be difficult to achieve universal healthcare. Another challenge on ground is the fact that most of the healthcare um, workers who who help um, with uh, the solutions, you know, who help to bring these solutions to uh, to the community members, most of them are not catered for. Most of them, you know, have live in very poor conditions, and despite the fact that they they work all through the day to ensure that people receive basic medical healthcare services, um, there is no welfare, you know, for them. So there there needs to be a welfare system for healthcare workers in incentives, in salaries, you know, and in in, in terms of in general welfare, you know, there needs to be a, an improved welfare for these people. So apart from Apart from these challenges I've mentioned, um, I will also say the final one will be funding, you know, because most of these projects, as we started them, we had to start with our own funding. Um, my, I'm, I, myself and my partners, we contributed money from our own personal funding in order to um, finance this project. So I would say financing for sustainable energy projects um, for healthcare is very, very important. And this is one challenge that needs to be overcome as well. Okay, and that's an interesting point because financing has been one of the topics that's come up again and again um, uh, during today's discussions. But also I was quite interested there in what you were saying about it, it, it's not enough just to bring electricity and sustainable energy to the actual physical hospital buildings and clinics. You've also got to help the people who work there to have better lives and better living conditions yeah. so that you can improve the healthcare uh, directly um, that way as well. So that might be something that's less obvious to when you go and explain your project it's less obvious it's a nice thing that you've considered that as well so i mean you're saying oh it's a drop in the ocean for for nigeria but uh, you know you're you're clearly a man with big plans is is the model is the model something that you think is scalable is it could it work in other places could it could it be scaled up uh, to be something bigger absolutely um i believe that if if we are able to implement this project and uh, the impact is seen in the next few years, in the next, let's say by 2023, uh, we're able to reach more than 500 um, local healthcare clinics with our sustainable energy solutions. And uh, is, then the impact is felt, the number of people impacted will be increased. Um, there'll be more access to jobs. Um, sustainable energy for healthcare will create jobs, but also improve the general well-being of each community. And also it make communities to, um, to not be weak, weak links, you know, in achieving global healthcare. So I believe that this is this is something that can be scaled as long as we prioritize investments. You know, as long as um, uh, our leaders, our policymakers, draft the budgets and then direct them to um, sustainable energy for healthcare, especially in order to uh, in order to improve the primary healthcare in local communities and also vulnerable communities. So I believe that this model is something that will be scaled just with time. Okay, and then just one final question, because you mentioned um, uh, policymakers there. I mean, if you, if you could ask for anything you wanted, and, and not just money, because we already know that financing is a problem, but, you know, what is it that policymakers do, can do that doesn't necessarily involve money? How can policymakers make this kind of project fly? Okay, um, one thing... Okay, uh, thank you for that question. One thing uh, policymakers can do uh, to make this project fly is to ensure that uh, the, the the laws and the policies that are being made, you know, are you know directed towards the improvement of healthcare generally, and not just about um, the funding, but improvement of general healthcare in local communities. So, meaning that um, when we are making our laws, when policymakers are considering the laws and um, other policies, they should inculcate healthcare and sustainable energy as a priority. Yeah, so that is what I have to say.
Okay, and that, that comes back to the theme of our of this the first session you were involved in this afternoon about energy and healthcare being a nexus, a very important uh, linkages between them and that you can't have good health care without having good access to sustainable energy. So that's a really important point there and a really good point to end our day on. So uh, thank you so much, Shimona, for uh, joining us again. I wish you all the best with your project and I hope to see you again at other European Development Days. Thank you very much and goodbye.